What does fat mean to you? Because when you use the word reflections of a fat girl, what is a fat girl? Well, I use it because, um, th in, and it's actually in the introduction to my book, it's because that's how I was identified by others. And so I absorbed that definition. I, in my life now, except for as the title to the book, to illustrate that point, um, I don't use the word fat. I think that um, if you look at women's bodies uh, around the world, you're going to see um, something. I mean, I'm going to draw in the air here, like a bell curve. Okay, so that there's a certain small percentage of women uh, on one end of the continuum who are very, very, very thin naturally. It's just genetically and hormonally the way they're wired. And on the other end of the continuum, you're going to also see um, a small um, percentage of women who are largely what we would call now overweight, but they're large women. Okay, but most of us fall somewhere on that big bell in the middle. And so I don't use the word fat. Just because you see someone who's a different size from you, that doesn't mean that they're not healthy. That doesn't mean, because people like to say, oh my God, you need to lose weight because you probably have high blood pressure. And, you know, listening to other people talk and hearing things that I'm hearing. And I just think it's so judgmental and it doesn't help. Social media does not help. Now you've lost the weight. Here's the other thing we need to talk about. And this is your specialty. You've lost all the weight you want to lose. I've heard so many women talk about when they lose the weight, but they look in the mirror, they still see that fat person. Well, I did. So how did you, you know, come to an alignment that you are who you look like now? You're not that fat person anymore. Well, so here's the thing. It's um, a little bit more convoluted than that, to tell you the truth. And here's why. Because um, I lost... I lost weight, I gained weight. I lost weight, I gained weight. There are uh, biological reasons why. Mm -hmm. When I lost weight, I wasn't at my natural weight or within my set point range. And that's a philosophy I embrace that all of our bodies have a weight range that we feel comfortable in. And if we are landing uh, below that, our bodies are going to fight to get back to their comfortable range, okay? So when I lost all that weight, and I, at one point, weighed 92 pounds, and I had people wonder what was my problem, um, it certainly wasn't my, uh, I thought I looked great. Other people thought I was starving. Um, the point is it wasn't at, I wasn't at my uh, natural weight or within my set point range. And uh, little by little, I gained the weight back because my body was mm -hmm. fighting mm -hmm. that low weight. It, to answer your question, um, my body is my body. I make the exact same weight I was when I graduated high school. But back then, I thought it was unacceptable and unlovable. And now I say, Look at all there is to love. You know, I mean, it's just because it's me and I'm healthy is the most important mm -hmm. part of this equation. I am healthy. And we are under the impression in this culture that you can look at a woman and based on her size, okay, you know if she's healthy or not. So a larger woman can't be healthy. And boy, are we wrong in that um, a thin woman is healthy. And oh boy, are we wrong. I'm not talking about obviously for every right. woman right. or every thin woman, not at all. But there are so many misconceptions about how size, um, how size affects health. So here's my question. Um, if you're dating now, how do you feel? Because I know you're married. So how do you feel? Are you okay with just 
taking off your clothes and leaving the lights on and hubby seeing whatever it is that you have? Or are you still where, turn the lights off and you know, we're just talking because how are you, because I want to see the level of comfortability with your body. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want me now? To, <laughs> I'm not going to take off my clothes. Okay. <laughs> However, I will say to you that um, th that question is a wonderful one. And uh, I would never say to my husband, turn off the lights. And when we have times of intimacy, more often than not, it's when it's light out. So there's no turning off the lights. The right. sun's out. Um, am I 100% comfortable just, you know, taking off my robe and standing there? And uh, no, I'm not. Am I far more comfortable than I used to be? Absolutely. Are there moments when I don't care and I will walk from the bed to the bathroom without anything on? Absolutely. Are there times when that's not fully the case? You know, part of what I'm saying to you is that even though I have, even though, you know, I, I work hard, Jackie, at practicing what I preach, okay? But I am also a human being, and I'm also a woman who grew up with all of those old body image message negative messages and those things sometimes are still alive in me the issue that i have is a guy can be bald he can gain 90 pounds and he's distinguished and god forbid if he has a little bit of money he can gain 300 pounds and he's going to get the young girls and any kind of girl around him but with women it's totally different a guy can be with a young girl overweight it's fine you're a woman and you've gained weight and you're with a younger guy they're calling you sugar mama we have to change the narrative on this I and agree. we won't be able to change it until we embrace our bodies. Also, another difference that people don't talk about, African-American and Caucasian women, our weights are going to be totally different. You can't give me this BMI crap and tell me I should be this when my counterpart, we're built differently, okay? We're built to... And you can't make me feel bad about it, but the doctors, and that's another thing, I think we need to reframe, retrain the physicians, the medical doctors when it comes to that too. Well, I, I would agree with you. And interestingly, there are, um, we hear all of the negative messaging around how being overweight or obese uh, leads to all of these illnesses. And actually, there are equal amounts of studies and research that have been done that say the exact opposite, but we don't hear that narrative. We only hear the, the ones that tell women that we're not okay with carrying um, weight on our bodies, whether it's in our boobs, our butts, or our bellies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not okay that we carry weight on our bodies. And for many of us, that's how we were designed. And see, here's the thing. Men were never, up until just very, very recently, historically, men were never, men were never looked upon as ornaments. Mm -hmm. Women have always been looked upon as ornaments. We're supposed to look good. We're not necessarily embraced or complimented on for what we've achieved in life. It's how we look. For men, it's been the total opposite. And I say up until this point in time, because far more uh, young boys are actually falling into the trap of uh, uh, eating disorders because yes. they're trying to get their bodies to look a particular way. But, you know, that's another story. What advice would you give people, especially now in, in this climate, in COVID, where just so what you're 20 or whatever pounds overweight in your mind, you're freaking still alive. Exactly, exactly. So there's um, uh, a woman that uh, I've, uh, I've seen on a public broadcast uh, system. 
um, doing specials about the wisdom of women and women's bodies. And um, her, she's a gynecologist. Her name is uh, Christiane Northrup. And she, um, she says, if you can stand in front of a mirror naked every day, you are a PhD mm. in body image. Okay. You have a PhD in body image. And that really resonated with me because what it says is it takes for many of us a tremendous amount of courage to do that, to not look away, to actually look at our bodies. It also is important in terms of being able to finally accept this is the body I'm living in now. It doesn't mean that it's the bot, the same exact body I had 10 years ago, nor might it be the body that I have 10 years from now, but it's the body I'm in now and I accept it. And because I accept it and I want to treat it lovingly, I am learning how to love it. I'm learning how to love my body. So I have a particular exercise for women to little by little gently help them starting off with being fully clothed to look at your body in a full length mirror. And then we challenge the negative thoughts and feelings that come up. And then I don't do this with them because they're going to be half naked. They are uh, unclothed from the waist up and they stay with that until, you know, day after day until it becomes less uh, uh, anxiety provoking for them. And then finally, they take off clothing on the lower part of their body and they're left standing there totally naked in a full length mirror and challenging lovingly all of the negative thoughts and feelings that are coming up. And little by little, day after day, that desensitizes us to the shock of seeing our naked bodies because it becomes part of what we do when we go to the shower or go to the bath. And um, I have had women tell me they have uh, experienced a tremendous increase in comfort level with uh, looking at themselves totally naked. Do you have another book that, that's coming out? Well, the, um, the uh, Reflections of a Fat Girl um, hard copy um, came out in, give me a sec, February. Um, six months later, the ebook came out. Mm. And I'm telling you the ebook because this one is $24.99. The ebook promotionally priced to launch it. And we've decided, my guru marketing people and I decided to carry the price through through holiday season, which of course is right around the corner. Mm. How could you not know by what, turning on TV and saying seeing Christmas ads. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's another story. Don't get me going. It's priced at only $2.99. Well, is so, it on Amazon? Is it on, it's it's on Amazon? It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. And I have to say, because I'm going to pat myself on the back here. Um, the um, I achieved uh, Amazon number one bestseller status for new releases. So I'm so, so, so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You can find it on my website. You can go to Amazon, but there's a link right on my website. That What's the would website? Findbodyfreedom.com. That's just, you know, here's a question that I have to throw out. Why should women support each other? Oh my God, who else is gonna do it? <laughs> really, come on. Um, see, this is it. It's, I think that in my lifetime, um, I have seen um, a, a, a lovely shift in women's uh, support of each other. It's not enough. 
when I was uh, growing up, um, not a whole lot of support. Women were in competition with other women, usually for the affections of men. And, you know, I, I, part of that is uh, part of our historical um, legacy, so to speak, because uh, at some point in our lives, we, and I'm talking about years ago, we did not have the power and the status that we do now. We were property, believe it or not, property of men. Um, and, and so anything that we got, it was because we were linked with a man. And I'm not talking about every single woman on the planet because there were certainly a number of independent women who made it on their own. But most women, decades ago, were getting their social status, um, their power, their belonging because they were linked with a man. It's very different now. It's very different now. You know, we can do it on our own. We've got the power. We've got the skills. We've. I'm not talking about every woman. Oh, no. But uh, many of us and the education to be able to make our own way in the world but not alone, not alone. And we need to learn to love each other in that way, to really, really be a sisterhood of female energy, of feminine energy, and rise up and just change the world because, forgive me for this or not, men haven't done a particularly great job. And it was, I think, yes, the Dalai Lama who said, if the world's going to change, it's going to be women who do it. If you look at other countries or, you know, um, the players are women, right? And it's being, it, it's, they're doing pretty well. You know, they're doing pretty well. Can I share something with you? I'm older than you are. Um, and, but that's not what I was going to share. What I was going to share was uh, in 1969, I graduated from college um, with a teaching degree. And um, I uh, found out that I was making um, thousands of dollars less than my male counterparts of the same grade level, so to speak, because, and I was told why, be, and, and I was putting my then husband, no longer husband, then husband, uh, through college. And they were saying, well, they're breadwinners. They have to support their families. Um, excuse me, what am I doing? You know, knitting in the classroom? Hello? I don't think so. Um, and, and I said, I'm in support of my family as well. My husband's in college. Um, this husband and I divorced in 1974. I could not get a bank account or a credit card on my own. I had to fight for it. Okay. 1974. I could not get, I'm putting him through school. I'm paying all the bills. I couldn't get a credit card. Okay. Because that's what it was like for women. Then we made less money. We weren't, a, we needed a man mm -hmm. and we don't. But I have to say, uh, not because my life revolves around him. And his shouldn't revolve around me either. We should be in the same solar system, revolving around each other. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just talking to you has just, it, this was just an illuminating conversation. And I love your book, you know, Reflections of a Fat Girl. Again, please go on, before you go on Amazon, you need to go to her website, which is www.findbodyfreedom.com. And then you'll see a link that says Reflection. So it's more important to hit her website first and go to Amazon. You've just, just been a pleasure speaking um, with you. I knew there was some New Yorker in you because when you was talking, I'm like, yes. Yeah. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are quite welcome. So I want everyone to understand that you are alive. Live your best life. Don't listen to what anyone has to say. It's your life. Live it to the fullest. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you for being such an awesome, awesome guest. Bye, y'all. <laughs>